So, how's it going, guys? As golfers, within the golf swing, there is a constant battle of body speed and arm speed. And of course, we need to be able to rotate within the golf swing to be consistent. However, today, I'm going to teach you guys a biomechanical term called moment of inertia that will help you to rotate easier in your golf swing, get more club bed speed, and have more consistent scores. So, take a moment and think. What is moment of inertia? Well, if you don't know, what moment of inertia means is the resistance to twist force, right? So, let's give an example. So, what I'm going to do is have my arms to my side, right? And then now I'm going to spread them out this way, right? And I'm going to rotate, right? So, as you can see, I'm rotating, but the speed at which I'm rotating is not very fast. Now, what I'm going to do is something different, and that'll increase the speed of my rotation, right? So now, instead of me being tall and my arms spread out, I'm going to shorten my arms to my side and actually bring my chest closer to my hips. So kind of get shorter, right? Now, doing this, as I rotate, you can see that the speed at which I can rotate is a lot faster, right? So what moment of inertia tells us is that the way in which we distribute the mass of our body, right? So if my mass is distributed very large compared to very small, influences the amount of rotation I can have, right? And when it comes to arm speed and body speed, when it comes to when my mass is distributed very wide, my arm speed is faster while my body speed is slower. Why is that? Because my arms are spread apart. Now, vice versa, when I'm shorter and closer, my arms aren't spread apart and my mass, the mass of my body is distributed smaller. So my moment of inertia is smaller. So I have less resistance to twist force. So that'll allow me to increase the amount of rotation that I can have, right? So how does this relate to the golf swing? Well, I'm going to give you guys an analogy to help you and then break down from backswing to transition to follow through how you can apply this concept. I hate to admit this, that I was once in your shoes where I was scrolling on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok on the latest golf tip to help me improve my golf game. Did that work for me? Maybe for about a few days or a week, but it never helped me improve long term. So what I learned and what you need to learn is that you need to know what your body can do physically and also what your most optimal golf swing is to help you improve your golf game. So how does that come into picture with me? Well, I will help you to understand your most optimal golf swing using both a TPI physical assessment to see what you can do physically, along with Sportsbox AI, te AI technology to help you to understand what your body is currently doing, and then also tracking the progress of specific parameters that we focus on to help you to improve your golf game. Ready to take action to improve your golf game on a long-term basis? Comment down below the word assess and let's get started. So now that we understand what the concept of moment of inertia means, now let's apply it to how we can use that concept to have a better golf swing. So to start off, Let's start off with setup and then moving into the backswing, right? Actually, side note, let's go ahead and do this. I want to give you an analogy to help you understand a little bit better. So, actually, if you think of an ice skater, right, who spins and, tw and torques and twists doing a bunch of tricks, what you'll notice is that before they go and spin, right, so... To be able to rotate as fast as they need to, actually their, their mass distribution gets smaller. So what that entails is if I'm going, for example, if I wanted to start to jump and twist, right? To twist, I have to bring my arms in closer to increase the speed of my rotation. Now, vice versa, when after I do spin and I want to decelerate and land, my mass has to be distributed out wider in order to help me land and decelerate. So 
what that tells us is that when my mass is distributed closer to me, right? So when I don't have as much distribution of my mass, that my rotation of my body increases, but my arm speed decreases. However, vice versa, when I distribute my mass larger, my arm speed increases and my body speed decreases. So now, thinking about that, we can use that at, to an advantage to help us with our golf swing. So let's start off with the backswing. So to start off with the backswing, so we're set up here, right? And from here, what we're doing is actually, even when we set up, is that our mass actually gets distributed a little bit less, right? So my arms aren't out wide first. Then as well, I'm actually bent over at setup, right? I'm not tall like this. We're bent over at 45 degrees. So my mass is already distributed a little bit smaller. So from here, now we have the chance to be able to rotate faster, right? And that's what happens. We want to be able to rotate efficiently in this first phase, right? Using our body, right? But however, going from here to now having my arms spread apart, now my body speed will eventually slow down as my arm speed increases, right? And as we know in the backswing, we're not trying to move super fast in the backswing because we're trying to set ourselves up for the downswing. So as I move from setup to the backswing, the distribution of my mass is increasing, right? So my moment, of, my moment of inertia is increasing, allowing me to slow down the rotation of my body and speed up the, the speed of my arms, right? Then from here, now, as I'm moving to transition the downswing, as we know, a lot of times the, the best players in the world have this squat move where they move down. That's the move where their distribution of their mass gets smaller, right? And then now that allows them to increase the amount of rotation moving into impact. However, the thing is, is that from here, our goal is to put speed in the club head, right? So in order for us to transfer the speed from our body increasing to the club, now the mass of our body, the distribution of it has to increase again, right? So now my moment of inertia goes from increasing to decreasing in the downswing and then increasing again to transfer the speed to the club head. So I'm gonna break this down to you using an exercise to help you understand the concept so you can understand this a little bit better. To help you understand this a little bit better, I'm now grabbing the infamous kettlebell to help us to understand this better. And the reason why I have this kettlebell is because the kettlebell will create momentum for us within our golf swing. And momentum is a force that can cause us to twist, right? However, we use the principle of moment of inertia to help us to change that amount of twist, right? So again, if I'm here with the kettlebell, as I move in the backswing and start the momentum, the, mom the mass of this kettlebell is gonna cause me to twist. However, because my arms are spread out and the distribution of my body, the mass of it is increasing, so my moment of inertia is increasing, now the amount of twist that I would have normally if I were this way is less, right? So in a sense, I'm here at setup where my moment of inertia is a little bit smaller. Then I'm starting to increase it. And now that allows us to control this kettlebell more because my arm speed is increasing while my body speed is slowing down. So if you think about a lot of people think that in the backswing that we want to have a slow takeaway that comes from our body actually decreasing its speed while the arms actually increase its speed, right? So, and that gives us the tempo that we need to start off the golf swing. And then going back to setup, now since we have this distribution of mass increase, now we can control this kettlebell going to the backswing. However, now we need to increase our rotation to increase the speed of this kettlebell, right? Because this kettlebell has weight and momentum to it. So as soon as I decrease my moment of inertia, then this is going to speed up, right? So from here, once I get to here, when I bring this down, now my body speed is increasing. And then at the last minute, to transfer that body speed from my body to this kettlebell, 
Now I'm going to increase my moment of inertia again, right? So a simple concept to think about is because I have something heavy is when I go and my takeaway from my setup to takeaway is that I'm actually going to get taller, right? Getting taller increases my moment of inertia, right? So, and that helps me to have good tempo within my backswing. Instead, if I were to decrease my moment of inertia going in the backswing, then it would be like this, right? And now I'm not controlling the mass of this kettlebell well. So, and just like the golf swing, just like the golf club, it has mass to it. And that's the way we can control it by how we distribute the mass of our body. So, essentially, set up, I'm going from a smaller moment of inertia to increasing it, getting taller, essentially. And then now, as I get taller and come down, this squat move, now my moment of inertia is decreasing, my body speed is decreasing, and then to transfer that speed from my body to this kettlebell, then it increases again, right? So it'll be like this. Taller, shorter, taller. So think about it in that concept. You're getting taller in the backswing, increasing the moment of inertia, getting shorter in the downswing and transition to decrease the moment of inertia. And then from here, I'm increasing again in order to transfer that speed into the club head. So I'm, now I'm going to give you a drill you can do with the golf club to help you to understand this concept. One mistake that a lot of amateurs make compared to better golfers is that they don't apply the moment of inertia concept correctly in the right sequence. So most times instead, what we see with beginner golfers or poor golfers is that their moment of inertia actually decreases in the takeaway, right? So this way, right? And then from here, as they come through to the golf ball, their moment of inertia coming down actually increases. And then now they're not utilizing that principle correctly and not putting enough speed into the club head. So this drill is specifically for you guys who don't apply this concept correctly for beginner golfers, right? So I want you to set up and what this is called is the stop the limbo drill, right? So I want you to visualize if you had a limbo here, just in line with your lead hip on this end, right? Your goal is to get the club to stop in your finish without hitting the limbo below your hip. So it'll look like this, right? I want you to set up, and this will be probably about a half backswing and then stopping at that limbo. So it'll be like this. One more time. And so what this principle does is forces you to use that concept of moment of inertia correctly without thinking about it. Now, why is that? Because the whole goal of this drill is to get you to increase your moment of inertia in this follow through, right? But in order to get to this point, going back in the downswing, you have to decrease your moment of inertia to increase the body speed to then transfer it into the arms and increasing the moment of inertia. And even going reverse, in order to increase my moment of inertia, in order to decrease my moment of inertia in the downswing, I have to increase it in the backswing, right? So that's how we deliver enough speed into the club head. So from here again, right, I'm going to be getting taller in this phase of my backswing, right, increasing my moment of inertia to reduce that twist force. Then as I come into downswing to increase my rotation, I'm decreasing my moment of inertia, and then I increase it again in order to transfer feet into the club head. And so I want you to start off like this, hitting little shots where you go here and there, right? So now you can see the speed at the bottom that you have when you apply that concept correctly. And so as a general principle, you should feel as if you get taller in the backswing, right? So my upper body gets taller, my arms are getting wider. Then as I come down, my body is getting closer to the ground. My knees are bending, so I'm distributing, distributing my, the mass of my body less to increase my twist force to rotate. And then from here, now to decelerate my body and speed up the arms to the club head, now I'm gonna increase my moment of inertia again, right? So try out that drill. I hope it helps. And let me know how it goes for you down in the comments. Hope you have a wonderful day.